Today I'm going to teach you how I do low water immersion dyeing, which is one of my absolute favorite methods of using fiber reactive dyes. The reasons I love low water immersion are that you don't have to do any tying of your garment or your fabric. So there's no rubber bands, there's no string, there's no taking the time to form any sort of patterns. It's literally stuff it in a bucket. And when you stuff it in a bucket, the dyes, the fabrics are gonna naturally make all kinds of organic patterning all over the fabric. So let's get into what you're gonna need to do low water immersion dyeing. I should say that there are tons and tons of ways to do low water immersion dyeing. Um, I started with Paula Birch's method and I have sort of evolved over the years into doing it my own way. And it's what works really well here for us at Wax On Studio. And I'm just in love with the ease and the surprise and the beautiful variations you can get. So I'm gonna show you a few examples of some things that we've low water immersion dyed just in the past couple weeks here. So we're working on some tea towels. And so here's a great example. This is Dharma Trading Company's shiitake colorway. I'm actually really surprised at how this came out. It, it looked totally brown in the bucket, but it just goes to show, and we're gonna talk about that again in a little bit, like the color in the bucket does not always represent the color that you're gonna get, especially after washing after drying, um, so don't don't judge a dye bath based on its wet form. If you look at all the beautiful variations that you can see in this cloth, isn't that amazing? I mean, there's just so much, <laughs> there's so much going on. I always feel like um, the crocodile hunter when I'm, when I'm talking about this, I'm like, oh, look at this, isn't it amazing? Isn't she a beaut? I love it. Uh, so that was the shiitake. This is eggplant. Really surprised at how that came out. It usually is a much cooler purple, almost like a purpley brown, when we do it non-low water immersion style. So when I mix it into a bottle for direct application or when I'm using it for batiking. Like I tell everybody, home dyeing is not going to meet your needs if you're a perfectionist, but if you're into surprises and letting the organic nature of these fabrics and these molecules do what they do, then you are gonna have a good time. So today I'm gonna be over dyeing this old shirt that I've had in my closet for a long time. And I noticed, I put it on the other day and I was like, oh, this is exactly the color of my skin tone. That doesn't look nice. I want to over dye this and it's it's old and it's got holes and it's got some paint splattered on it so it's going to be a great example. And I'm a really big fan of upcycling the clothing swaps. Find clothing items that are made out of cellulose fibers and I'll put a link into uh, my list of what cellulose fibers are. That is what is designed for use with fiber reactive dyes. What I've done here is I've taken my bucket and I filled it up to that sort of one third point. And I have my rust brown fiber reactive dye. 